to order if we could please pay attention to council member Padilla for the invocation and then rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise if you're able. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like us uh, all to welcome Rabbi Debbie Steele. She has been the rabbi of the Jewish community in Topeka since 2006. She serves as the clergy for the temple of this 100 member family congregation and it is the only Jewish congregation in Topeka and this year it celebrates its 90th year in the community and the 150th year of Jews in Topeka. Rabbi Steele graduated from Rice University in Houston and went to seminary at Hebrew Union College in Cincinnati. She is married and has two boys, both of whom currently attend KU. Good. <laughs> thank you. Well, I want to thank you, Councilman Padilla, for inviting me to offer the invocation tonight. And I just want to take this chance to say to all of you, thank you for your service to our city. Appreciate it so much. So here's my prayer. Dear source of all, in this moment of pause before this meeting begins, help all here to remain steadfastly committed to the highest values that we can bring to this meeting and to our city. In the name of our pioneers who settled this area, may we display bravery, perseverance, and an appreciation for our unique city. In the name of those in Topeka who struggle to make ends meet, may we live the values of compassion and concern and find wisdom for how to support and aid them. In thinking of our children, our elders, our families, and our business leaders, may we strive to create a city that is fair, just, clean, multicultural, religiously diverse, and thriving. Let each of us be an advocate for justice, an activist for liberty, and a defender of dignity. May our leaders humbly serve our city, keeping an open mind and a ready ear for the views of others. And in this age of fake news and partisan speech, may the members of this body rise above the fray and search for truth and common ground. God, for the benefit of all who work, play, and live in Topeka, we humbly ask your blessing and support for our wonderful mayor, our esteemed council, our city manager, and all the public servants of our city. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. today is that we are celebrating fire prevention week and if our chief can come up and the representatives from the the rep representatives from the fire department that could join us so that we could read this proclamation chief did <laughs> Whereas fire is a serious public safety concern, both locally and nationally. And while our homes are locations where people are at the greatest risk from fire, these fire emergencies can happen anywhere. And whereas fires in the city of Topeka have killed nine people in the last five years, and in the Topeka Fire Department has responded to nearly 1,000 structure fires in the last five years, and whereas the Topeka Fire Department installs free smoke alarms and inspects hundreds of commercial structures annually in order to keep our citizens safe, whereas the city of Topeka firefighters are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of fires and injuries through prevention, protection, community risk, risk reduction projects, and education, and whereas the 2018 Fire Prevention Week theme, look, listen, and learn, 
Be aware, fire can happen anywhere. Therefore, I, Michelle de la Isla, mayor of the city of Topeka, Kansas, do hereby proclaim the week of October 7th through the 13th, 2018, as Fire Prevention Week. Would you like to say a few words, Chief? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, tonight I'm with Aaron Freeman. He's the president of the local. We work closely together to give service to the community as a whole. Uh, one of the things, 80% of all uh, structure fire deaths are in residential homes and 79% of all injuries and fires are in residential homes. And the cause of these fires, the biggest cause is home cooking. So for us to get out there and explain to the community how important it is to have a fire safety plan, smoke detectors, and work with the fire department if you need help. We have free smoke detectors out there. We would like the community to address it. Come to us and we will get you a free smoke detector installed by those individuals that are on the streets each day. Well, thank you, Chief Aaron. Would you like to say a few words? I would just remind everybody as you're evaluating your homes for smoke detectors. Um, we are going to reach daylight savings time in another month or so. So it's always a good time to check your batteries and your smoke detectors, make sure they work. And another emphasis, it's, um, it's long been known by the firefighters, but it's being pushed towards the public more and more is you guys have kids, grandkids at home, uh, have them sleep with their bedroom doors closed. That in of itself can save a life very easily and allow us to um, do our job and get that individual out. So that's just one thing I would add. Thank you. Well, thank you both for the service that you guys provide our city and keeping us safe. Thank you very much. The next presentation that we have is a very special one for me. If Ms. Becky Drager could just join me up here. Um, uh, it's, it is tradition that many officials have a challenge coin. And for those of you who don't know what a challenge coin is, it's a coin that is awarded to an individual that demonstrates significant service above self. And Mayor Wolgas had a challenge coin, the TPD has a challenge coin, I think our fire department also has one. And, and it's just when we catch people doing outstanding good, something that is completely out of the ordinary, we would like to have those individuals recognized with something that is very meaningful. It's a military tradition, um, and it is something that's very sacred. And as we were looking for something to add to the challenge coin that this mayor, your mayor, was going to have, uh, we were looking for elements that would incorporate not just the regular capital. Um, we wanted something local, something that said Topeka, and Margo and I started working really hard on trying to talk what elements are everywhere in Topeka. And we talked about those city of Topeka arches that are starting to pop up everywhere in our community and our community is absolutely so proud of. But we also couldn't leave aside the capital. Um, and we wanted to have something that had flavor of our skies and everything. And as we were walking, Ms. Drager is a phenomenal artist. So if you have not seen her art, I would highly encourage you to look for it. And it's very Topeka focused. And in looking at your pieces, it was almost like you were hearing the heart of trying to find something that really represented our community. So as I go throughout the nation uh, and in our community, meeting people that are doing something extraordinary, I want to thank you for helping us have an image of our city of Topeka that is so aptly represented. She has not seen the coin. So, Becky. Right. Oh, yeah. They're hard to take out of the package. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, that's so beautiful. So if you could show maybe to the... So you can barely see it at home, but we'll try to have a picture online um, so that we can show it. But it's it's one of Becky's pictures. It depicts our flowers. If you're standing as you're coming into into the the central area and you're parked on that stoplight right before Blue Cross Blue Shield, there's a whole bunch of flowers. There's a welcome to Topeka Arc, and far in the background is the Capitol. But you can also see a little bit of our skies and the flowers and the effort that we put into having our city beautiful. And for that, Becky, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. 
I appreciate it so much. I'm so honored. I appreciate it. So now I would like to ask Councilwoman Ortiz to come and join me up here. Yeah. You like bossing people around. Let me boss you around a little bit. <laughs> and I would also like to be joined by the amazing young individuals from our Boys and Girls Club. <laughs> you never stop being a kid. <laughs> Don, you're not joining us? Come on. Have somebody else do that for you. <laughs> so I asked Councilwoman Ortiz to join me because when the, when the hurricane happened in Puerto Rico, we all started having a conversation about wanting to do something from the employees of the city of Topeka. And Councilwoman Ortiz immediately, with her heart forgiving, because I was reached by Senator Miguel Laureano from the district of Umacao, and I know that I'm speaking Spanish <laughs> to, to all of you, but that's just one of our regions on the east side of the island. He reached out and he said, hey, Michelle, would you guys be willing to partner with us? There's a whole bunch of kids that are not going to have school supplies, um, and I'm just trying to get enough for 200 students. And I know that school already started in Puerto Rico, but the need is still there. And as we were trying to figure out something, Council member Ortiz immediately said, no, we're going to do this and we're going to call it Operation Puerto Rico. And she motivated everybody. And, and first, I want to thank our staff, because when, when we started talking about this, people started immediately responding. So to our beautiful staff in the city of Topeka, thank you. I love you guys in your heart of giving. And I called Puerto Rico and I was trying to figure out, so which organizations do we partner with? Um, and as we were calling Walmart, because we were trying to figure out logistics on how we were going to do this right, um, one of the, the representative from Walmart and Miguel both said, oh my God, what better partner than the Boys and Girls Clubs? Because we have an affiliate in Puerto Rico and maybe you guys could do the donations through them and they could get them to the area in Umacao and we can then have the kids benefit from the giving. Well, what was impressive was not only that the staff gave and they gave generously and the council gave generously. But then I come to find out that because Don figured out that there were gonna be kids that were gonna benefit from this that were in a sister Boys and Girls Club, the kids gave generously. And the kids collected $50. So I want for you guys to please recognize these young leaders in this community. <laughs> the needs in Puerto Rico are certainly still not done. Um, Puerto Rico needs a lot of support. There's a lot of loss still happening. There's a lot of homes that are still struggling because they're living with tarps. So every single thing that we can do to help makes a big difference. So to make the big announcement, um, the students were able to raise $50. So I waited till last minute to see how much the student raised because I matched dollar for dollar what the students gave. There was a total of $277. And now with my match and with everything else, and I, I add a little bit more, we have a total of $400 going to Puerto Rico to the Boys and Girls Club. So I just want to say thank you to all of you. So Miguel, I know that you're watching. Eh, comparte esto con la isla. Los queremos mucho. En Topica tienen familia. So I just said to Miguel, thank you. You know that you have family in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico has a sister city in the city of Topeka. So thank you all. I appreciate you. And look at all the great things that they did. Sylvia, thank you very much. Nope. Um, you know, we, we make an incredible impact in our own community. Um, there are 14 club site locations um, in Puerto Rico. We were happy to be able to extend the good work that we do in our city to those kids in Puerto Rico who need us most as well. So thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to meet those kids. Hey, could you tell us if you guys have any school supplies? Which school supplies? Um, crayons and other school supplies awesome. and pencils.
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, guys, thank you very much. We now proceed with the roll call. Mayor Bay Lisland? Here. Councilmember Siller? Here. Clear? Here. Ortiz? Here. Emerson? Here. Padilla? Here. Jensen? Present. Mays? Here. Cohen? Here. And Lester? Here. We now proceed with the appointments. There is a correction uh, that has to be made. I'm sorry, we're getting some feedback. City manager, we're going to yeah, just pull item C. Pull item C. Okay. Do we have a motion? We have a motion. We ha uh, do we have a second? Just so that everybody knows for discussion purposes. The reason that we're pulling item C was because as we were in the process of approvals, there was a, a clerical glitch. I, I approved something that wasn't supposed to be approved just yet because I hadn't had my interview process. Okay. So we have communicated with the candidate. There's nothing wrong with the candidate. The candidate is absolutely lovely. But we want to go through the whole process of going through the proper council member and having the mayor meeting. So we're, we're in the process of doing so. So this was an appointment that we go online and we approve. And I think I went trigger happy. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the explanation. So we have a motion. And a second to remove item C from the consent agenda. We now proceed with the vote. The mayor does not vote. Excuse me. We have nine yes. Nine having voted yes, the motion passes. We now have in front of us the consent agenda as amended. What is the pleasure of the body? That's the point. The point. The rest of the Oh, the, uh, the reading. Oh. If the clerk would read. <laughs> a is a board appointment recommending the reappointment of Doug Snook to the Board of Plumbing Examiners for a term ending August 18, 2020. B is a board appointment recommending the reappointment of Carol Jordan to the Topeka Board of Zoning Appeals to fill an unexpired term ending December 1, 2021. C has been withdrawn. D is a board appointment recommending the appointment of Alan Behrman to the Topeka Metropolitan Transit Authority for an unexpired term ending September 18, 2021. We have heard the appointments. What is the pleasure of the body? We have a motion to approve by Council Member Cohen. We have a second by the Deputy Mayor. If there's no questions on this item, we proceed with the vote. We have nine yes. Nine having voting yes, the motion passes. We now proceed to item five, the consent agenda, if the clerk would read. A is a resolution introduced by Council Member Karen Hiller granting Iron Rail Brewing an exception <coughs> to the provisions of City of Topeka Code Section 945-150 concerning noise prohibitions. B are minutes of the regular meeting of September 18, 2018, and there are no applications. We have heard the items. Is there questions or is there, what is the pleasure of the body? Deputy Mayor? Motion to approve. We have a motion for approval. We have a second by Council Member Emerson. If there's no questions, we proceed with voting. We have 10 yes. 10 having voting yes, the motion passes. We now move on into action items. Item A, if the clerk would read. A is an ordinance introduced by City Manager Brent Trout authorizing initiation of condemnation proceedings to require temporary easements and permanent easements for Northeast Seward Avenue for the Norwood Street Waterline Improvement Project Number T281104. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Governing Body, this is a continuation of the steps that we've started related to 
um, the condemnation proceedings that we have regarding this project. Um, if there are any questions, the staff will be happy to answer. Does the staff have, uh, the body have any questions? Seeing no questions, what is the pleasure of the body? Deputy Mayor. Motion to approve. We have a motion for approval. We have a second by Councilwoman Clear. If there's no discussion, we proceed with the voting. We have 10 yes. 10 having voting yes, the motion passes. We now proceed with item B, if the clerk would read. B is an ordinance introduced by City Manager Brent Trout adopting the 2017 National Electric Code amending the City of Topeka Code Section 1430010 and repealing in its entirety Section 1430060. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Governing Body, um, last week we had a presentation regarding this item and then uh, some discussion. Um, I haven't received any comments additionally with that. Uh, so I don't have anything to add, but uh, staff is here and can answer questions if there are some. Does the body have any questions? Would like to have staff come up. <clears throat> Deputy Mayor. I just want to thank them for their time this morning. They met with me personally to go through everything and make sure that uh, everybody was happy all the way around, and I am very happy with the process. With that, I'll move to approve. We have a motion for approval by the Deputy Mayor. We have a second by Councilwoman Clear. Further discussion? Seeing no discussion, we proceed with voting. We have 10 yes. 10 having voted yes, the motion passes. We now move on to item C, if the clerk would read. C is an ordinance introduced by City Manager Brent Trout concerning the International Property Maintenance Code and local amendments regarding notice and procedural matters. Amending City of Topeka Code sections 860, 080, and 110 and repealing original sections. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we went through this much process with uh, Councilwoman Hiller, uh, bringing some various points forward. Um, working with uh, Deputy City Attorney Mary Feeney. They have worked through many of the issues and what you have before you is I think a very good document that addresses concerns that were expressed and provides us a uh, document that we feel can be approved. Thank you City Manager. Before we go into discussion we do have one individual signed up for public comment. If Mr. Orville Johnson. Mr. Orville Johnson. It seems that Mr. Johnson is not here. So at this point, does the body have any questions for staff? Councilwoman Hiller. Thank you, Mayor. I have no questions, just a few comments. Um, in sum, what he said, we've worked on this for a long time. Um, we do have some more sections that people are interested in seeing some deep dives done into and we have the staff is going to need to work once we've passed this on updating standard <coughs> policies and procedures um, but we are I think this package is as ready as it's going to be so I wanted to thank Mary Feeney for her initiative as well as hard work in getting this this ready it's taken a lot of time um, thanks to the council thanks to Mike Haugen and the code staff for their work prior and then working on the language and then to city manager and whoever all else had comments and so on. Um, and with those credits, move to approve. We have a motion for approval. We have a second by the deputy mayor. Do we have additional comments or discussion? Seeing none, we proceed with voting. Oh, ca cause council. Uh, thank you. Um, I too at some point would like to see us all sit down and have a deeper discussion than, than just this. Um, you know, I've been cleaning out a lot of my papers and in 2013 I found something that said it talked about code and the same issues that we have today and I wanted to bring that um, to share with everybody. Um, if, if you don't deal with code every day and you don't um, deal with the constituents, some of this you might not understand. 
Um, and, and I think it's important that we all understand it's not just a phone call and it gets taken care of. It's, it's, sometimes it's, it's deeper than that. Just like, for instance, <clears throat> I have, and I'll be talking to the municipal judge about it, uh, a gentleman, and actually in Karen's district, but I get a, I get a lot of calls because I'm the oldest one here, I guess. Um, and he got cited for his apartment building, and so he's taken down the whole back of, he had to take down the whole back of his um, stairs, a three-story building. But then code has went by, and now they're saying, well, you, you've got to, also the pillars in the front of your building are rotting out. So he's got to go to court on that. And it's clear to see that this gentleman has hired somebody and he's working on his building. So my thing is, why would we make him go to court on the front and we see that he's working on the back? Um, so I'm hoping that's something that he doesn't have to go to court. I, I can see him going to court if he doesn't finish the project or he doesn't bring it into compliance. But it's little things like that. Um, um, you know, and, and, and that's the kind of calls that I get. You know, I'm, I'm, I've am I'm got to pay thousands of dollars to get my deck up and to get that up and running, my stairs, but yet I've got to go to court now on this issue on the front because they're saying I haven't done that. But it just seems to me that somewhere that people, and people don't know to come forward. They don't know to come forward or, they, or they're scared that they're, nobody's going to listen to them. And I think that's our job is to listen to them and to make them feel more comfortable than, than, what they, than what they feel. I also don't, I didn't dig into it, but I really want to. I don't like our mailing process, that we mail a letter and you get one letter and that's it. I don't, I don't like that. And I think those are some of the things that we need to figure out um, on how we do it to make, to make them more easier. Because I tell you what, a lot of people, they don't know, and if they don't know, they can't fix something that they don't know. I have sat here with the previous city manager, and I've said, we've got the newsletter going out. Why don't we use it to educate? And we don't educate people. I'm sorry. Um, we're doing a better job at it, but we're not where we need to be, by no means. Um, and I've, I've sat here and said, we could put in there, did you know? Did you know it's illegal to blah, blah, blah? And I think if we were to educate people that we could make them or help them do a better job of cleaning up their properties or, or taking care of whatever fines they have. Because some of these people are just appalled when they, when they get this because they don't know that it's the law. And um, so that's what I would like to see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vote for it, but I'm going to press the city manager. And um, because I've done this with even our first city manager, I said code needs to be gone through from the front to the back. And it's our duty to do that. And, and the reason why I say that is because when I sat here before, when I first got on board, I could not believe we had one inspector that went out and did nuisance. We had another inspector that went out and did housing on the same property, the same property. And, and it, that has changed only because I've continuously said code needs to be looked at from the front to the bottom. My question has never been answered, never. There's one part of town that needs a little more att uh, attention than the other part of town. We all know what I'm talking about. Why can't we bring that code in law enforcement officer over one day or two days in areas that are more crucial than just his side. I've had code officers tell me, I don't want to go on the east side. I don't want to go to the dirty south or whatever, North Topeka. It's their job to help. And, and, and again, I think it would be beneficial to us, who we always hear from the people, to cross train. One person in certain areas cannot do it all by themselves. I'm grateful for Mike Haugen, who was an officer that's now uh, in code, because he understands both of the law and the rules. But I, I really would encourage us to really dig deep into it and to look to see where we can really be beneficial to help people, it, especially um, the Spanish speaking. We've got to get, they, they will do better if they know better. If they understand what they're supposed to do, they will do better. So um, 
that's that's my two cents but i will encourage this city manager again to look from the top to the bottom and i'm grateful for staff for going through it but i think it's our job because we get the calls and i think it's our job to make sure that our that the citizens of topeka are happy because that's who we work for and that's who pays our check and, and i think it's very important and um to also to place some responsibility on the homeowners to you know to make sure that they know and that they're doing but i can't sit here and say enough we need to educate 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 and we just don't do that thank you madam mayor I just have a, one other thing that I would like to back up. I, I've had a, uh, a number of, um, for whatever reason, uh, uh, constituent complaints due to code violations and, 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 and condition of, of properties and stuff. And I, I first want to say that um, um, Mike has done a fantastic job. He, he is very uh, responsive to me. Um, very detailed and articulate in, in explaining to me the process of, of where um, if there is a case open on on the property and I thank you for that um, I would like to see you know I think it would be helpful if we could take a look at um, you know uh, using technology and, and, and the website to, to to possibly post some standard operating procedures um, um, not only for the benefit of, of, of of the uh, the complainant, um, but also for the the violator, um, as well as just for the general public, and and, and even for myself as 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 a council member, you know, I've had to kind of get up to speed, and and some of the stuff I I had to take some of Mike's time to understand exactly what that at is. So, um, I think we have the ability and the tools that we can put that out there. So. Um, we can reference it or reference people to that um, to help with, okay, here's what happens after the first violation. Here's what happens after the second violation. Here, here's the timetable and, and, and uh, mm -hmm. versus uh, me having to contact Mike every time um, there's a case. So um, I'm going to vote to approve this obviously as well, but I do hope that maybe in the future we could look at um, maybe getting some transparency of getting that information out there so so people can can also look at it themselves and and it'll also help um, with the process I think thank you thank you sir additional comments questions seeing none we have a motion and we have a second we proceed with the vote We have 10 yes. 10 having voting yes, the motion passes. We now move to item D, if the clerk would read. D is an ordinance introduced by City Manager Brent Trout amending Topeka Municipal Code Section 860-100, adding a new section number Topeka Municipal Code Section 860-085, and creating a new Chapter 8.75 of the Topeka Municipal Code concerning unsafe structures. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, governing body, this is a continuation. It's the second part of the items that we've been looking at. Um, I will say that, you know, from the comments, uh, the standard operating procedures are in the department. We'll make sure that we work through getting those out to you guys um, so that you can understand the processes that we use and ensure that that's available. And we will look at the various things that Councilwoman Ortiz mentioned. I took some notes and uh, worked to try and make sure that we can get those things out and the uh, issues and concerns you had regarding uh, various coverages of town and we'll make sure that we address those. So I hear you and we'll, we'll pursue those. Councilwoman Ortiz. And, and one of the things, I mean, I would like to know the process. You know, uh, again, I remember um, I went through the process when I found out I was all in code um, and um, you know, they were taking subpoenas and laying them, you know, on one of the judges' desk who was not even, you know, she was in court all day. And we, we have a chief on call. And, you know, we need, and, and I went in and I came back and I said, that's why you can't get a quick turnaround on your subpoenas because we have a chief on call. So I would like to see the process and what we're using. 
And, and, and maybe it's something we can brainstorm and maybe it's something as simple as that that we can tweak. If that's something that you don't know or staff doesn't know, but to, to go over and set them, I don't know if we still do that, but to go over and set them on somebody's desk, you can call their AA, their AA, they get breaks, they get lunch breaks, if they know that right. they're important, it's just like our search warrants, we can get them done, but we gotta know who to contact and how to contact to keep make this as speedy as possible. Right, we have those, and we're we have those procedures in place, and I don't believe that we have those kind of situations you're referencing anymore. So, but I'll verify the different information and get it to you. I would like to see the process. Yes, That's what and I we like have that see. process that we follow on everyone, and so we'll get that information to you Thank and you. to all of you. Thank um, you. The other thing that I'll say is that um, I haven't gone through because we haven't got there yet, but part of the rapid process improvement. Well, this is definitely one of the items that will be in that review process that the city staff is going to do it's one of the prime targets that we have is as far as one of the first rpis that we'll conduct is relation to this and is related to this particular issue we want to make sure that we have the best streamlined process that we can relative to all of the notices that we're sending and the procedures that we're following reference the reference the code enforcement Yes, Councilor. And I could pre appreciate that, the streamline process and not the process that they want or that they think. It's the process that is actually the streamline because there's a lot of tweaking that needs to be done all over the city and all in different departments. Thank you. If the body would not mind, we're back in an item that relates to the IPMC. Mr. Johnson, who was called, was not available. The second item pertains to the IPMC as well. If the body would not mind, I would like to call him for his public comment opportunity. Mr. Johnson, if you could come please and approach the podium for your public comment. Orville Johnson? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Johnson, you walked in. We had, you're, you're signed up for public comment. This is public comment. Well, you signed up for the IPMC item and for public comment. Right. Would, would you like to do your IPMC statements now? Or one or the other? Well, well, you signed up for the IPMC. So I'm calling you because you signed up for both. I can't hear that. It's a sound back here. It like to me. Sir, you, you signed up to make yeah, statements. Yes. So this is your opportunity to talk about the IPMC part. About 6A? Well, yes, you, you came in late, but I'm giving you the opportunity to speak to that if you would like to. To speak about 6A? Yes, sir. Okay. At this point, it will be 6B, but it's still IPMC. Okay. You want me to say what I've got to say there? Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, Madam Mayor and Council Members. I'm Orville Johnson, 1330 Southwest Lincoln Street here in Topeka, Kansas. First thing I would like to do is I would like to thank Karen Hiller, my favorite council person, and uh, Officer Derek Parrott for aiding us in the neighborhood of finally getting rid of some drug dealers. They were every night out in the yard shooting guns. The police were called so many times, people give up on calling them. And Karen and Officer Parrott got it handled, got them out of the neighborhood in like a week. Um, on the uh, international code, my comments on that are going to be, you know, first of all, my family came to the United States, some of them in 1640. I'm a, genealogist. I'm a fifth generation Kansas, Kansan. We here in Kansas, we're less than 3,000 people. Now it seems like the people in the city of Topeka like to think that we are some big, huge metropolitan area. You know, like uh, maybe some of the big fancy neighborhoods back in New York. I don't think we are. I think a lot of us are pretty poor. I know myself and a number of my neighbors that don't want to come up here and speak. They're afraid they'll have retaliation against them. You know, what are you going to do to me? You're going to retaliate against me? You, you, the worst thing you can do is you can try and kill me, right? 
what I already have, diffuse large B cell non-Hodgkin's lymphoma that I'm fighting, been fighting since July. They figured it took them from about the first year after my back surgery when they found it to figure out what was wrong with it. Well, I have code violations. That's the reason I'm here, right? I had back surgery in March because I'd been suffering in 2017 all year from back and financial reasons, retirement, new retirement, new insurance. I had to get that all set so I could finally get the back surgery done and most of it paid for in 2018. So 2017 and 2018, I haven't got anything done hardly on, I haven't got any work done, period. But here the city, you've got your international code on, you know, for housing maintenance and all this good stuff. Myself and a number of the good citizens that live over there on our street, we didn't go over there and buy into a high rent neighborhood. We went in over there and bought some dilapidated properties and I worked on, I worked on our house for six months before we moved into it. And then I've got a neighbor, he's a school teacher or assistant school guy. These code violations, they came out there. I got diagnosed with, after all kinds of scans and biopsies and everything they did on this cancer thing, I finally got found out in July, the first part of July, that I had what I have. And uh, then it was toward the end of July, they're telling, you know, they're, I started chemo the 16th day, day I think it was, uh, in, uh, in July, and they don't want me out working in the hot sun. They don't want me exerting myself. But then toward the end of July, we got notices of all these code violations. The neighbor that's a, uh, I've asked for an extension of time here, please, to talk about a little more about this, not myself, but some neighbors here. Okay. How much time do you need? Two time? minutes? Three minutes? How many more minutes? Give me three and I'll try to cut it shorter than that. How about that be? Move to extend for three minutes. We have a motion and a second for extension for three minutes. We proceed with the vote. We have nine yes. Nine having voting yes, the motion passes. Thank you. Then I have a neighbor that's a teacher and again, like me, he got his notice on his code violations, and some of them, I'll tell you what, he had a couple of them was ridiculous. The painting that he wanted done. There's steel siding on his house, and they're telling him the steel siding needs painted because it's got a chip or two on it. And uh, then, uh, you know, everybody over there got these code violation notices, the, you know, the last week of July. Summer's almost gone, but it's hotter and I'll get out. Anybody knows anything about painting, you, if you paint when it's 100 degrees, you're wasting your money on the paint. So, you know, everybody's got that problem. We own several properties over there that have code violations. We've bought those up so more drug dealers don't move in. The one right to the south of us, we bought it up because we were hearing gunshots. We bought it so no more renters would be in there. We didn't know the gunshots were coming from inside of the house. We found the bullet holes after we bought the house. But it's nice and quiet because we don't have any renters over there catching it on fire, shooting guns or anything. But the old garage, for instance, you know, they're saying there was uh, some patchwork done on it, been painted over. Your code people say, you know, well, we need to fix that in a workmanship manner, and it's been that way for I don't know how many years. We've owned it several, you know, oh, five or six years, I suppose now, and, and it had been done long before that. But uh, anyway, these notices come out the end of July. That's the end of the summer. You know, you're going into fall, like I said, the guy's got to go, he's starting to have to go teach school. I'm fighting this cancer thing. But all these codes, can I ask the council a question? Sir, See if we get a, uh, you're, you're, everybody knows, you've got the, uh, the uh, it's called a manual on standard, standardized traffic controlled devices. Does anybody on this council know what it's about? 
It was adopted in whole by the city of Topeka with no exemptions. The city cop officers don't know what's in it. They don't know that a flashing light's got a blink. Anyway, we're not New York City with high income. Our income here in Topeka is way below. This thing, I don't know, they tell us that they can only give you 60 days extension. We asked for 60 days extension. We were granted the 60 days. But my chemo doesn't even end until the last chemo treatment's October the 30th. I don't know whether you have any provisions in that. There ought to be a hardship deal in there. We don't need, you know, we're Kansas. We don't need one size fits all government stuff coming down. That's the reason we have the 10th Amendment and the state's right. We don't hire you people to go in there and adopt all these international things that, you know, I don't know what this code electrical thing is. I do know when I build a garage, can I get another minute or two? Um, sir, you, you, you've had an extension. If you would like to make a closing comment, you could make a closing comment. Can I make comment. a closing comment? I, I know that the, the electrical code, when I was building a garage, it's always been, you know, you ground the, the electrical box. But the inspector was good enough. He came over there and looked at it, and he said, you got to ground it to a rebar in the footing. Well, you know, that's Mickey Mouse. You have to conclude your comments, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Council, we have in front of us um, item D. Do we have any comments or questions for the staff? Wait. Yes. Um, Madam Mayor, I, I guess just for, this, for the sake uh, of you know, anybody watching, um, I've come a couple times to the, the court docket and I think it's changed now. It used to be on Wednesday mornings, but um, it, it was sad to Mr. Mr. Johnson's point. It was kind of sad that the people caught up were, did seem to be the people that could at least afford to do it. Uh, on the other hand, I, I have to commend the staff because they had people sitting right up here that had an entire uh, book with different programs that they can help people out. Um, you know, they have people that can go paint your house and things like that. So. I, I would hope that there can take, it's been about a year since I've been to one of those, but um, I'm sure that's still happening, but I, I, I would think we can probably never do a good enough job of getting that information out. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Emerson. Additional comments or questions? Councilwoman Hiller. Well, I'll throw a little in there. Um, that's why when I made my comments on the first, first piece that we approved and, and along the way, that those operating procedures and the judgment calls are, are as important or more important than than just the framework of the policy that we are we are um, we're passing today. And Councilwoman Ortiz is right. I mean, we need to have it in a format so people can read it, so that anybody who has a question can read it. We do need to know what those SOPs are. We have a lot of of street experience each of us that's gotten calls or been out and involved and so on you know one of the questions i was raising all along mr um, mr johnson touched on it was roofing you know there's the staff has asked to be cut loose from the specific days of 60 days but we do need standard routines that that people will get so that we all know how much time somebody's typically going to get for this or that or the other thing and they do need to be reasonable and for the staff they need to be routine so then we're not they're not having to make a custom decision every time they go out and um as with what councilwoman ortiz was talking about you know we're we're worried about budget of course and being easy on people so they're still doing multiple notices on the same property um, we, we, can, we can fix that and make it simpler. We can be thinking about some standards on terms of how much time, what you say in that notice when it's a roof or exterior painting, because those often, for those of us who plan that on our own, we plan between two and five seasons ahead what summer we're going to do that and who we're going to get to help us and what time of year we're going to do it and so on. And so I'm hopeful that this opening up the framework that we're passing tonight will really um, will give the chance the staff the chance more they had it already but if this language that we've changed makes it feel better fine um, to to get to get some other routines and so appreciate your comments so we had somebody up here thank you 
Deputy Mayor. Uh, just a couple of brief comments. This, this is a delicate balance. You know, people that own property have God-given rights to that property that are enshrined in the culture and the laws of our country. But the people who live next door to you that own their property also have the same, you know, rights enshrined in our culture and on our constitution and that sort of thing. And we're tasked with how do you balance the rights of the person who owns the property with peeling paint versus the rights of the person who has to live next door and look at said peeling paint and you know look at the property values and how do you take a neighborhood that's not in such good shape and try to raise the bar there. So you know people come to us and, and they assume that this is something very easy for us to grapple with. And the, the truth of the matter is this is not. Some of the most gut-wrenching decisions that we will make in these seats are what we tell people to do with their property and how fast we tell them to fix and whether or not we're going to destabilize their financial balance in order to get them to fix something. So these are serious, serious issues. And yes, it may seem like just peeling paint to you, but your neighbor next door, that, that may be a huge deal to them. And they have a right to look out their window and see something nice. So it's absolutely delicate balance. And I want everyone who's watching to know that, yes, we take this very seriously. That's why we grapple with this stuff in public. And we try to start it with the right issues. That's why the city has partnered with all these nonprofits with these programs to try and help people where it is a significant financial hardship. So uh, and the other thing I will share is that this is not a Topeka problem. Every community I've discussed this with has the exact same issue, and they're grappling with it in much the same way we are. There isn't a good solution, and they're trying various different things, and bits and pieces have come together to form various programs. So this is not an easy fix. Um, I, I am excited to you know, take a look at the code and do a review on that and see if there's opportunities to partner with different organizations and that sort of thing to try and solve these problems. But um, this is not going to be a quick fix, and it's not going to be easy. But I do agree it's something that's worth looking at. Thank you. Thank you. Council <clears throat> Not everybody, Deputy Mayor, it qualifies for those programs. You know, they're for basically for the handicapped and the elderly. So not everybody qualifies. Agreed. And, um, you know, it's just like me. I, I like to cut my own grass because can't nobody do it any better than me. I'm, I'm just saying there's people out there that feel that way, you know. But I do hear what you're saying. but. <clears throat> Another thing I thought about <clears throat> in the easement, and we have ditches, <clears throat> and in the, in the easement, it used to be the city's property, and then it went back to, uh, the, or it was the homeowner's property, then it was the city's property, and now it's the homeowner's property. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of people in, in East Topeka, they are confused. And so when they get fined for it, because they're like, well, I thought that was the city's. No, it's yours. So they're not doing it. And we've got to do a better job. We've got to figure out what it is because it's changed so many times. Um, it's just it's just like with shrubbery and the trees. You know, the city was doing it. Now it's not their, you know, not it's, it's the homeowners again. So we've got to do a better job of figuring out what it is, get a clear understanding, and then educating so everybody knows what to do. So when people are getting fined, and they think they know, but we've changed it, and they're not up on speed, they're upset, and rightly so. You know, I've also had some constituents that have called me that Mike can tell you, he, pro he knows who the, <laughs> I would call them, you know, the, the repeat offenders, you know who they are, and who's not gonna do a good job, and who's not gonna, and, and you know, I've had people that they will clean it up, and I had one guy, and he said, he talked to the code officer, and he said, I'm going out of town. Can I get that when I come back? And he said, yeah, he got fined for it. Because the code officer don't remember that, mm -hmm. that conversation. We've got to do a better job. Got to be do a better job. And he's not a repeat offender. He, he would, he'll, he'll get to it, you know. But anyway. Councilwoman Clear. And I do agree that we have a part. <clears throat> However, as a past educator we can't do it all for them we can't make sure they and you know we can't make sure they understand it we can't keep bending over backwards and do it for them. we can't provide the nonprofit we can't we can't do it all they have to take some responsibility and step up and do it themselves um, and that's a hard lesson to learn and I think some of our kids nowadays haven't learned that lesson and they're gonna be in trouble as they get older because it's all been done for them so um, 
I do agree, but I do think we've got to not go over that line and hold them accountable, and they can't get mad at us. You know, ignorance of the law is no excuse when you break the law. Ignorance of code is no excuse when you break code. So um, you need to be informed, and you need to keep up on it, and you need to watch the meetings, and you need to look on the website, and you get educated. Thank you. Councilwoman Hiller? If, if I can make a wrap-up on that. As we have had these conversations, kind of along the way, even prior to the staff introducing this, sometimes what I've heard is that people, staff or people in the community, have despaired that having our community look nice and, have, and having safe, adequate housing is impossible right, and affordable as well. And, and I just want to th throw out that Topeka has looked nice before, and we've had a well-oiled machine for code compliance. We have had a good system for rental property inspections and gotten good response. And so as we work through this process, I just want to throw out that, that we can do it. It's possible for it to work steadily and successfully. It's been that way here, and we can do it again. And, and some of these discussions that Councilwoman Ortiz is suggesting will help us break down some assumptions that have been made. For instance, that, oh, it's all bad landlords and the landlords won't do anything. Some of the feedback I got from Central Park neighborhood where Mr. Johnson lives, that they were talking about it at their last meeting. They were the last team up to clean up neighborhood was that, oh, it, the landlords popped out and, and get, the, get the painting done right away. They're familiar with that system. They don't want that fine. They know, and they're, they're prepared to deal with it. So where people say, well, those landlords, you know, I don't know if they'll do anything, they were the first ones to go get their properties painted. So to kind of break down those assumptions that sometimes people have made about who will fix their house and who can't. And Councilwoman Clear is right as well. You know, most of the home maintenance things are easy to do. You just got to know that, that it's important. Um, don't need somebody to do it for you. Just we have to raise that bar in this community that that minimum level of taking care of your property inside and out is what we're what we expect as a community and for our families or the people that we are leasing property to. And again, we can do it. We can do it well. Do we have a motion? We don't have a motion one? yet. Um, I would move to approve item 6D. We have a motion. We have a second. We have a motion by Councilwoman Hiller. We have a uh, second by Deputy Mayor. If there's additional comments. <clears throat> yes, City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as we look at what we do with code enforcement, uh, the staff has been making changes relative to how they're doing things. Mm -hmm. And I think we're headed the right direction. Um, but I don't know that we've expressed that necessarily with all of you. And so I look forward to bringing that information to you so that you can see what staff is working on. Um, and then if you see some things based on uh, responses you receive from your citizens or your own knowledge, I look forward to hearing any comments you have um, because we are working towards making sure that this is a cleaned up town. We treat people respectfully when we do it. Um, we also grant extensions when there are extenuating circumstances. Our guys are very compassionate. They realize when there are issues that will prevent a person. Um, the other thing that I can say is what I'm impressed with is people are taking care of their properties. I looked uh, in my meeting that I had with Judge Doherty today. There are many of the items that come before her case that are handled by the property owner and they don't need to be fined. It's very, very rare that anything is actually guilty based on that they haven't done the work. They've either gotten some assistance or they've taken care of the, themselves. And so I think we are on the right track relative to people taking responsibility and also our system that we're utilizing. So look forward to sharing all that with you. Thank you, City Manager. Hearing all the comments, I think we now proceed with voting. We have 10 yes. 10 having voting yes, the motion passes. We now proceed to item seven, non-action items, if the clerk would read. A is a discussion of funding recommendations by Topeka Shawnee County Alcohol and Drug Abuse Advisory Council in the amount of $570,000 for the 2019 Special Alcohol Fund. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Governing body, tonight I'd like to invite Max Wilson forward. If Please come forward, Max. Max will go through the information related to the uh, recommendations that have been placed by the Topeka Shawnee County Alcohol and Drug Abuse Advisory Council um, for their funding of various programs within the, within the city. Max. 
Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me about my annual bronchitis. It happens every time I appear before this group for some strange reason. <laughs> so I'm chewing a couple of lozenges. I may choke to death, but don't worry about it. <laughs> good evening, Mayor De La Isla. Good to see you back in good shape after your illness. Good to be back. Great. Uh, and City Manager Trout, council members, and staff. I'm Max Wilson, the chair of the Grants Review Committee of the Topeka Shawnee County Alcohol and Drug Abuse Advisory Council. As I was just thinking, I want to go how long I've been on that council. I think the council's been around for a little over 35 years, and I think I've been on it for 28 years of those, of those years. I guess I'm going to have to drop dead and be carried out before I get off of it. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, the council has 19 members and nine provider provider alternates. These include nine provider representations, uh, representatives, eight community representatives, and two public representatives. The role and mission of the council is to reduce the incidence and social costs of substance abuse disorders in Topeka and Shawnee County. To achieve this purpose, the council will provide a forum for service provided and others concerned about substance use disorders. Uh, provide advice and recommendations regarding the allocation of public funds. That's why I'm here tonight. Uh, identify unmet community needs regardless, regarding alcohol and other drug abuse. Uh, support and promote programs and strategies to effectively address uh, co community needs. And support and promote community education on alcohol and other drugs. Uh, the Topeka Shawnee County Alcohol and Drug Abuse Advisory Council recommends the following programs for funding from 2019 City of Topeka Special Alcohol Drug Liquor by the Tank Liquor by the Drink Program Tax Funds, as authorized in State of Kansas Statute KSA Chapter 79, Article 41A, and KAR Agency 92, Article 42. I'm sure, you're going to memorize it which states monies in the Special Alcohol and Drug Program Fund shall be expended only for the purchase, establishment, maintenance, or expansion of services or programs whose principal purpose is alcoholism and drug abuse or treatment of per persons who are alcoholics and drug abusers or are in danger of becoming alcohol and drug abusers. In any county in which there has been an organized uh, alcohol and drug advisory committee, uh, Committee, the Board of County Commissioners shall request and obtain, prior to making any expenditures from the, this fund, the recommendations of the advisory committee concerning such expenditure. The City of Topeka 2019 recommendations are as follows. And the, all of these programs meet the principal purpose criteria stated in the state, state statute and also use the Institute of Medicine's core strategies that are represented in the national registration of evidence-based programs. Total money uh, available, estimated available from the city this year is 570,000. That's up 35,000 from last year. Uh, so you all have been going out and doing some liquor drinking <laughs> to make that. I have not been responsible for that. I haven't had a drink since, well, 29 years ago, last drink I had. And uh, so you all must be making up the difference. I did my fair share during the day. <clears throat> um, county money, however, is down $5,000. Uh, that's those liquor by the drink establishments in the county, which aren't very many. That fund is down, I think, down to $45,000 from $50,000 last year. Um, the following, I think you've had this for a couple of weeks, haven't you, this readout, printout? You want me to read all of it? Uh, well, Boys and Girls Club uh, recommendations are $8,500. Boys and that's uh, for Logan Center. Boys and Girls Club Smart Moves Teen Center is for $10,000. We had two that we didn't recommend funding for, and that's Kansas Big Brothers Big Sisters and Mirror Inc. Uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters had a community-based and site-based mentoring program, which is a very great program. They were requesting $16,800. They didn't meet the on the scoring sheet criteria set up by the city. They were under the 90% funding threshold, as was Mirror, 
who outpatient mentor, uh, peer mentoring program. They were asking for 53,207, and they too were under the 90% threshold. Uh, the remainder of the programs are funded. Uh, prevention recovery, prevention programs, uh, $171,438. Evaluation and intervention, $55,243. The third judicial district's drug court, 30,000. KCSL Drug Endangered Children Program, $12,382. And Vallejo Social Detoxification Program of $282,437. And that all equals to 570000 Now, you want me to go through and read, uh, tell you about the description of each of those programs? You have it in your narrative. Okay. I'm Max, if you, that's what I was going to say. If you would like, I would ask the body if they have any questions for you with regards to any any part of the procedure or the allocation. I don't think that I said the body is not interested, but like you stated, sure, we I do think. have the documents. Yeah. I just didn't want to croak it out if it wasn't necessary. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be happy to croak it for you if we really want to. <laughs> Councilwoman Hiller. The only question would be... Um, I'm sitting on the ECD committee this year, as you know, three of us are, and, and the council looks at those recommendations as well. And, and so the, the choice of that 90% threshold is one that a committee makes. Right. So um, the, the agencies that did get funded got pretty much what they asked for right. or close to it. All but um, two did, I think. But you, you really felt that, that um, going ahead and making the choice to fund only to, to make that threshold for for points that high and, and make those choices was the best way to allocate yes. the funds this year? It's really the only defensible way to do it. Okay. I didn't know how far yeah. off everybody, the, yeah. the two that weren't funded. And we've, we're using the, the city's uh, criteria for the scoring sheets to do so. It matches up very closely to the youth and social services as well, okay. which I think is important to be as close as we can. And we appreciate the input that you've given both ways. So Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And for those of you that don't understand what the scoring system is, those of you that are new to the body, what we've done is that we have, we score the grants and then we develop a threshold <coughs> of how much they match the criteria that, that the city has put forth. And then based on that, if they meet that threshold, a 90% means that they are not only meeting, but they're also complying with what they're saying that they're doing and that they have a, a track record of showing that they're actually doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, so it's been a really long process since we started developing this system, but I think that finally we have it to a place that everybody's tracking with it. Any other questions for Max? Mr. Wilson. Oh, I go by Max too sometimes. <laughs> Oh, a dog's name of Max. I <laughs> after a dog. I see no questions. <laughs> Max, you can croak your way to your seat. <laughs> well, I've got a couple of other items I really oh, want to talk yes. about, not, uh, yeah. which I forgot to do. Some of you may not know that the uh, bottom line on Liquor by the Drink funds it is by Liquor by the Drink. It's not if you go to the, uh, the uh, liquor store and buy a bottle, it's not... It's not that tax. That goes to the state entirely, I think. And then the liquor by the drinks is when you go have a glass of wine at the Red Lobster or something like that. You'll pay a tax on that glass of wine, or eight glasses in my case, um, <laughs> back in the day. Um, so I paid a, quite a lot of tax on that. So anyway, that goes to the state, Department of Revenue, who then distributes, they take a cut out of it, I don't know what the cut is. And then they, they distribute it to the counties and the cities. And the uh, city liquor by the drink at, uh, uh, outlets get, get the tax from that. County gets the tax from those out of the city. And a third of, the, third of those monies go to city general fund, a third to city parks and rec, and a third to liquor by the drink, or liquor, a third to uh, alcohol and drug issues. Same way with the county, in case you didn't know about that. Mike has uh, helped us a great deal when he was with the ABC and doing inspections and we appreciate the good you work you did, Mike. Glad you're back on the, on the council, not back. On the council. Anything else? 
Oh, we Come. just voted oh. to open the iron rail, so we'll be continuing to add to. Uh, I saw that. You got a, you got, you got a, a, a deferment of that law, or whatever that's called. Uh, one of the things, well, the grant review committee works very hard on these, and we've got an excellent review committee. Dinah Pennington, who was formerly the director of community corrections, and also served as the uh, grant review chair of the Juvenile Justice Authority grants uh, for many years. Judith Donovan just moved back here from D Washington, D.C. She was formerly the director of prevention for the state of Kansas prior to moving to D.C. And her last job was with the city of Washington, D.C. as a director of prevention. Probably one of the most knowledgeable people in the United States on alcohol and drug issues, particularly in the prevention area. So we were fortunate to get her to serve on that committee. Um, John Homlish, Dr. John Homlish, I don't call him doctor very often, but he has a PhD, I think, in occupational, uh, occupational business. Uh, he's a director of, of uh, continuing education, a PhD in continuing education. He was with Medinger for many years. When they moved to Houston, he went over to Community Action and just recently retired from Community Action. Very bright man. Uh, and I'm serving as chair. I've had many, many years of experience in writing grants and also in uh, reviewing grants with both the uh, city and the county and the uh, Department of Education, charter school grants, uh, and the ju juvenile justice area as well, and the state juvenile justice. So that's about my, that's my pedigree, and I am a recovering alcoholic, in case you didn't know that, uh, which qualifies me for nothing. <laughs> Thank you so much for your comments, Max. I don't see the body having additional questions. We thank you for your service, for serving for so many years, not only in this capacity, but also our community in the way that you have through PARS. Keep drinking socially and responsibly. <laughs> <laughs> we need the money. <clears throat> There's no other items before the council, so at this point in time, we proceed with announcements, starting with our clerk. Uh, the October 9th agenda next week will be, we have two presentations. One is the Shawnee County Health Status Update. The second is the Sales Tax Project Update. The consent agenda, you will be considering a tort claim appeal from Marcia Cheney. Uh, action items include approval of the 2019 Special Alcohol Grant Recommendations. We have a resolution setting a public hearing for the Neighborhood Revitalization Program, a resolution for the initiation of eminent domain proceedings for the Soldier Creek Booster Pump Station, Non-action items include a discussion um, on proposed amendments to the Topeka Zoning Regulations, Title 18, that are related to building design and landscaping standards for, non, for new non-residential construction. We have an update on the 2019 Neighborhood Impairment Grants and an update on the 2019 SORT Target Area. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Um, today I have two announcements. Um, the Food for Fines started today, or actually yesterday, with the Municipal Court. will be ongoing through the month of October. Anyone with a fine can bring in 10 cans of non-perishable food and have $25 forgiven from their fine. All items will be donated to the Topeka Project and distributed to all seven food banks in Shawnee County. Brandlin, Brandon Bayless, our TSG Division Manager, was selected as to the 2019 American Public Works Association Emerging Leaders Academy. This selection was through a competitive process where only 17 persons were selected from over 200 applicants. The Emerging Leader Academy is a year-long national program that provides intensive leadership and management training within the context of public works. It encourages professional growth through a strong network of peers nationwide and offers an in-depth introduction of skills required to be an effective public works leader. So we're excited for him to be able to participate in that project. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you very much. I want to congratulate again Monique and, um, and everybody in the city and Sasha and everybody that were, when at the last minute they were going crazy. They were calling employers. They called me to see if even I could go and get uh, West Star Energy to start voting because they broke the system uh, <laughs> because the city of Topeka started voting in drones. Um, Advisors Excel got involved. This is what happens when a community gets involved. The city of Topeka was the winner. The first place of the uh, Encore Prize, $10,000. Now we go to the final. I think it's in San Diego or San Francisco. It's in, so, somewhere in California. It's LA. <laughs> so thank you all who voted. And um, we look forward to the next round. And we're going to 
advocate very hard for that. A lot of kids are going to be able to benefit from this. I wanted to say thank you to uh, Senator Dole, who was here. I don't know if any of you know that we just dedicated a statue at Washburn University. It was absolutely wonderful to have him there with his spouse and uh, just being able to celebrate the legacy of a person that has done so much for our country. Uh, Purple Heart, uh, Bronze Star, I mean, just, just a delightful person to just be in the presence of super sharp. Um, he was kind of funny when the, you know he was sitting down. One of the comments that he made: "Well, they like me. I might as well run again. I think I'm going to run again." <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, just an absolute honor. I don't get smitten with people because you know you meet everybody, but he's pretty amazing. Uh, the other thing I want to say is this is uh, this was this past month was Hispanic Heritage Month. And, um, and I think that it was wonderful that I had two great opportunities. I want to say thank you to LULAC for putting together a great event. Um, Saturday, I got the opportunity to speak to some students, juniors and seniors that are thinking of post-secondary education. They had speakers for them. Um, they had individuals to come and inspire them, connections with, it was, it was Manhattan that was there. You know, I'm more of a KU person, but I appreciate Manhattan being there. Um, Lisa's looking at me like, what? <laughs> and uh, no, but in, in all seriousness, thank you for everybody that showed up. And then I had the awesome treat of celebrating with the children in the McClure Elementary School. This is an ELL school that earned their proficiency. So I have the cutest pictures of these kiddos that now are able to be proficient in the two languages. Um, and the families were there to celebrate with them and it was absolutely phenomenal. Um, so just wanted to say thank you for our community to just, you know, for all the little things that we're doing to just all of you for helping us work to have a better Topeka. So the next person is Council Member Padilla. Caught me by surprise. <laughs> I want to say, uh, follow up on what you were talking about with uh, the Eng English and dual language efforts. Uh, I have a grandson that goes to Whitson Elementary, and one of the reasons he goes there is because they have that program as well. And those kids are like sponges. I mean, they can, he speaks it like he's been doing it from a birth, but uh, I compliment the, the uh, school for continuing that program because it's reached a lot of kids. Uh, and again, the gen to gen uh, voting was amazing. I put that out to as much to as many people as I could. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, I just want to say one thing real quickly, and then I'll move on. Um, we have a we have a lot going on in Topeka. I mean, there isn't a weekend or a weekday. It seems like that you have to make a choice of to where you go, which is wonderful. And I've heard a lot of good comments about that in the community. We've got a, a even bigger weekend probably coming up with a visit from President Trump. What I want to ask uh, our community to do is, uh, and I know they will, uh, whether you support the administration or not, uh, I want our city to show its best foot forward. I want them to welcome uh, visitors to this community. I want them to act in a respectful way, and I want them to make Make their uh, voices heard, but do it in a way that we'll be proud of. And that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Councilman Padilla, Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Uh, so last Sunday, I had an incredibly fun opportunity in College Hill. Uh, we got to unveil um, some marker stones that we had partnered with both the city and Washburn on uh, to put in the median on 17th Street. And you know, if you talk about building community and, and community pride, uh, you know, we, we, as this governing body, have put together a grant program which helped that community come together, design these marker stones, and acquire them and get them installed. And just the pride that, that folks in College Hill showed in unveiling these. I mean, this was such a statement for their community. They got to be part of this. I say they, we. Um, we got to be part of all this. Uh, and those marker stones are going to be there for 100 years. And folks got to see that part of the College Hill legacy go in, and it was just, it was really quite exciting. Then from there, we all went over to Margarita Lisco's, 
uh, and supported <laughs> our, our efforts. Um, but he, and, and that business opened their doors. They provided free food. And you could just see this community coming together to rally around this, granted a small accomplishment in the grand scheme of things. It just shows how if everybody comes together, even the smallest, simplest thing, putting up a marker stone in a median, what kind of a rallying point that can build community pride with. I would love to see all the other neighborhoods in to be, come together and say, you know what, we want to put a marker stone at the grand entrance of our community and use that as a way to come together and build things. It was just, it was an exciting day and I was so happy to be part of it. Um, huge shout out to Monique and her team who, uh, you know, pulled out all the stops to put this together for College Hill. It was great. Thank you so much. Councilman May says no. Councilman Cohen. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. I um, wanted to remind you guys, I told you last time, that we have Oktoberfest at, at Fairlawn Plaza. Starts at 10 a.m. The wiener dog races are at 1, so I expect you all there. Um, we'll be there at the finish line. Thanks. Councilmember Lesser. Uh, real quick, just wanted to uh, say I had a really good time last uh, weekend at the Topeka Zoo, uh, Serengeti Nights. Um, it's fantastic. So if uh, you get a chance next year, do we have a date yet? No. No date yet, but uh, if you get a chance next year, something to really check out. It was really, was really cool. Um, and then uh, this weekend, Ribs and Bibs. Um, uh, visit Topeka and Brett worked really hard bringing a great lineup in of performers. So um, if you, hopefully the weather will, doesn't look good, but hopefully the, the weather will pass and, and uh, we'll be able to get that. So. Thank you. Councilwoman Hiller. Just need to preface my remarks by saying it sure is good there are 10 of us because we can spread it around a little bit. <laughs> Everybody's gone to different things. Um, I wanted to give great credit to the Glow Ride, which it either went by people's houses or they saw it on TV, the Glow Ride and the Bike Fest. Not only were those great events, the Glow Ride was Saturday night and the Bike Fest was, um, was Sunday, and it is, to some extent, a BMX version of a reprise of the beloved great Topeka bike races that were out in Gage Park when a lot of people, depending on your age here, or your kids or you yourself, were younger. But something that I think is really special about that is that, that at this point, after I think it's the third year, maybe the fourth, it is totally being run by young people here. Carl Fundenberger, uh, Sarah O'Keefe, Andy Fry, and Matt Messina have, have taken the reins of that whole event. And that's happening all over the place, too. And it shows. It was fun. And I uh, just want to give hats off to them. I rode my first log strider bike, a grown-up size strider bike made out of a log. Pictures are on Facebook, but that's different. <laughs> um, the dedication of the McKinley Burnett statue was Sunday afternoon. The mayor did a wonderful job with remarks there, as did others. That was really, there was a big crowd. Um, it's a great story, of course. McKinley Burnett was the head of the NAACP and really was the driver behind getting the plaintiffs together and getting a lawsuit going here in, the, in what became the Brown v. Board of Education, Topeka Board of Education Supreme Court case. The com there was a big crowd. The comments were very thoughtful and meaningful um, about the past as well as now and future. And those, those are always meaningful to me. Um, and there was great music, Kyla Jade and the community choir, and it rocked. Um, Last night, along those same lines, there was a session at the library. It was officially hosted by our African American History and Genealogical Society, but it was intended to give voice to the folks that were plaintiffs, parents, teachers, and students back in 1954 and the years close to that when, when the case came down. And there were, there were 52 people there. And at least 75 of them were, had attended or taught at one of the all-black elementary schools at the time. And it was fascinating to hear those stories told um, about the life and times. You know, a little bit of commentary as well. I think we're all kind of looking forward. Um, this weekend, I wanted to, I, I don't want to put you on the spot, Mayor, but if you have some particular roles for us at the League of Kansas Municipalities, uh, I certainly am eager to be part of welcoming the guests, um, or maybe there's an email coming, but uh, that's coming up this weekend, and Topeka is hosting it, which I'm really excited about, and I know the mayor is, 
It's got a strong role there. And then last but not least, for those who are not aware of it, I'm not sure anybody from Topeka is able to go to this particular session, but in Pascagoula, Mississippi, on Saturday, the, there will be the christening of a new Navy destroyer that is just now framed out and is starting the construction process. When completed, that Navy destroyer will be named for Frank Peterson, who was the first African-American Marine who earned the designation of aviator back in the 1950s, and also was the first African-American colonel in the Marine Corps. So he is a very important native son of Topeka, and that ship will be named after him. The christening is, is a starting step, and we got very late notice about the fact that that was occurring in Pascagoula. But in somewhere in 12 to 18 months from now, there will be the, um, the actual, shoot, I wrote down all the words. The christening is now, and the, it will be commissioned um, from its home port, and we'll watch for that. We'll all be around and, and make sure that we've gotten the word out in the community. That's a pretty exciting thing for a native son. Thank you. Welcome Burger King to North Topeka. <laughs> all excited about that. And go Chiefs. Whoa. I cannot. Ooh, that's hard to come after right there. Come back. Um, I wanted to thank um, Councilman Henderson. You know, he's always watching my steps, and he called me and said, I got Tim Rencher right because he misquoted my Coco movie on Friday, October the 5th. <laughs> it will be at Santa Fe Park in Spanish. And uh, Saturday, October 6th, it'll be in English. Um, I'm a little nervous. I've invited everybody. I think I've kind of bit off more than I can chew. Um, we've got a... I don't do that social media stuff, but my daughter said there's about 650 hits that yeah. people are going to be there. <laughs> so um, hopefully everybody will come out and um, enjoy themselves. Um, it's, this is the first time we've done this, and this is in honor of my father and a lot of good memories there at Santa Fe Park. Um, so, Mr. Rencher, I know you never get anything wrong, so I just, I just wanted to correct Mr. Henderson if, if, he, if he said something wrong. So. Anyway, I hope you come and please pray that we have that it does not rain. <laughs> Thank Got you. It. Council Member Henderson slash Henderson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, just three quick things. First of all, uh, to piggyback on what the mayor already talked about, the Encore Jenna Jen Prize. I just just want to give people a little perspective that there were 25 semifinalists nationwide, and. As, as I said a couple weeks ago, some of the semifinalists were from Chicago, New York, L.A., San Francisco. I think we were maybe the smallest city or close to the smallest city in it. We got like 20% of the votes for, for Highland Park for this Jen to Jen. Fantastic. Thank you, everyone who participated in uh, $10,000, and then we're still in the running for another 50000 So fantastic. Uh, also, it's already been mentioned, but... Uh, we went to the Kyla Jade concert at Shawnee Heights on Saturday night, and I had never seen a single episode of The Voice, so I wasn't know what to expect, but she was fantastic. I had the correlators from Shawnee Heights up there for a couple numbers, but she also brought a couple girls that she was a member of a girls' trio in high school, and those two girls came back and sang with her, and both fellow Topekans, and uh, it, it was fantastic. So I, I really appreciate her doing that. Raised a lot of money for the, uh, the theater department there at Shawnee Heights. Uh, last, I just wanted to uh, recognize uh, Mr. Wilson, Max, and his wife, Judy. Uh, not only has he now volunteered, I didn't realize, 28 years on this task force, but he and his wife do a lot in the Rolling, uh, Rolling Meadows uh, neighborhood in District 4. I really appreciate everything you guys do. Thank you. Before we go into the public comments, I do also want to say thank you to Kyla Jade. I think it was phenomenal. And it was, for, for those of you that don't know the story of McKinley Burnett, his, he, his statement when, when the, the, the ruling was made was that he can finally sing my country, tis of thee, and mean it. That now, now it really had meaning. 
And to wrap up the event after having praise and worship downtown with Kyla leading it, which was amazing, and the community choir was amazing, everything wrapped up with Kyla singing My Country Tis of Thee, and it was just phenomenal. Uh, oh, with so, all of us singing. Yeah, all of us singing. Yeah. So with that, we, we had two individuals signed up for public comment. One of them was Mr. Johnson, and it seems like he left. Um, Can I take his place? <laughs> no, we can't do that, Max. <laughs> but thank you for asking. <laughs> I, I, I wanted, I, seriously, I, I forgot to mention Rochelle Vega Ratana on the Grant Review Committee, and she does so much excellent work. I just had to do that. Sorry. No worries. <laughs> thank you. The, the, the next person signed up to speak is Mr. Joe Weir. <clears throat> good to be back. Um, May 8th, I stood before you and, and informed you what we were doing in Ripley Park in Timberley Apartments. My name is Joe Weir, and, and thank you, Council and Miss Mayor. Um, this morning, I, I read this to myself, and it took me four and a half minutes, so I know, know I'm on the clock. <laughs> but for the record, I'd just like to read it. It would be so much easier. But on May 8th, I informed you of the outreach efforts to Timberley Apartments near Ripley Park. The flyer attached contains the statistics of the food served, but does not reflect the changes in the apartment community or the children we have impacted. 20% of all children in Topeka live in poverty, and a significant portion of the children live there in these apartments. Many of our efforts have had a direct impact on these children. We have seen furniture donated to six families, closed to many others, along with transportation services to others. So uh, every Sunday, for the last 23 of 26 Sunday afternoons, we serve an average of 170 people. We've served 3,200 hamburgers, 2,500 hot dogs, 1,700 pounds of chicken, and 1,350 box lunches have been distributed to the residents of those apartments. Ripley Park has been a source of controversy for the city since the incident with Dominique White. It's a forgotten area of the city with blighted property within it, which is fortuitous that I'm speaking to you now, especially with city codes and what's coming up with the grants next week. But uh, one of those blighted properties we'd like to pursue in order to make it a community, we want to make it a community resource center. It's an, ab it's an abandoned church, but we envision a potential worship facility with soup kitchen, training, equipping classroom, <coughs> city service information center, transportation services, services, and a harvester's food drop. This property we're looking at is located at 235 Southeast Line. It's an abandoned church that was deeded almost 60 years ago to the Church of the Living God of the Pillar of Ground and Truth. To our knowledge, all of the board members are deceased and the title to the building is for all practical purposes in limbo. There are no property taxes due since it was a nonprofit and we haven't found any liens against the property. The roof leaks, the soffit fascia is rotting, the east wall is buckling, it's open and animals use this to crawl in and out. Cats are running in and out under the foundation. Greg Hale with Kansas Secured Title said this, I'm not really finding anything of record that you don't already have. I sat down with one of our title attorneys and discussed this property this afternoon. We believe the best pathway to clean this up would probably be for the city of Topeka to take title to this by condemnation based on the blighted condition of the property. Then hopefully you can work out an agreement of some sort to allow your group to rehab the building and use it as a base for your ministry. As we discussed, there's a possibility that title may have reverted to the national church. May I have some more time? You still have a minute. Oh, I do? It'll take a go. In order to determine they occurred, we would need the bylaws of the national church. Well, I spoke to Assistant Secretary of State Eric Rucker in person for half an hour immediately after the election and he took a sincere interest to help us find the bylaws of the local church. However, his time has been very, very limited, and I feel that 60 years ago, the paper trail may be non-existent. Hal Smith, the president of the board of the Topeka Rescue Mission, is intimately aware of our efforts along with Barry Feeker. The rescue mission is not interested in assuming responsibility of this project. However, they can certainly help direct us to contractors, donors, and business leaders who might be. 
Winter is approaching and our team is determined to continue our Sunday food distribution efforts regardless of weather conditions. We need the City Council's help to bring this abandoned property back to viability and used as a useful resources for the families of Ripley Park. One possibility is to have the city condemn the property, secure the title, and lease it back to Bread of Life. This should allow us to pursue city, state, or federal grants to invest into the building. We could raise matching funds through local businesses and churches and then approach contractors and suppliers to help us with labor and supplies. We have a little experience in doing this. We need guidance on the back page. May I ask for some time? That's, that's what I was going to say. Do you need like two minutes? Yeah. Yeah, this won't take long. We have a motion. We have a second by Deputy Mayor, second by Council Member Emerson. All those in favor, uh, please vote. On the back, you'll see the... the uh, sir, just a second. Oh, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm with you. Okay. <laughs> Voting. You vote with you. We have eight yes. Eight have been voting yes. The motion passes. On the back page, you'll see two pictures. One was the one was the very first, second day we were there, I think, second or third Sunday. In the very back corner is the church, on the right hand side. On the bottom is a picture of the church property itself. As I said, we see this as a a, a community outreach center that could really benefit the children, the families of Ripley Park. And we'd be happy to engage in whatever it takes to bring this about. I'd much rather see the city or somebody else do this project, but if, it, if need be, we're, we want to step in and do whatever it takes. We've got a vested interest in the people here. I've come to know many of the residents, and it's just, uh, it's heartbreaking to see on weekends so many children running, running the property. If you've been down there, you know what I'm talking about. And I think it's very fortuitous this could this could really be a win-win for the city so thank you for your time and um, I just hope you can put me in touch with the right people thank you for your comments thank you we will have somebody talk to you uh, now that the meeting is done um, at this point in time we are about to we have the need of entering into two executive sessions if the uh, city attorney would please read the parameters of the first session the motion is to recess into executive session for a period of time not to exceed 15 minutes for consultation with the city's legal counsel to discuss attorney-client privilege matters related to pending litigation as justified by KSA 75-4319B2. In order to aid the discussion, the following individuals should be present. Members of the governing body, City Manager Brent Trout, Administrative and Financial Services Director Nikki Lee, Police Chief Bill Cochran, Chief of Litigation Shelley Starr, Police Legal Advisor Luther Gagne, and myself. No action is anticipated to be taken when the open meeting resumes in the governing body chambers. Body, we have heard the requests of the legal staff. Is there a motion to recess into executive session? Councilwoman, Councilman Cohen has made the motion. Councilman Padilla has seconded. If we could please proceed with the voting. Again, this is to go into executive session, not to exceed 15 minutes. We have 10 yes. 10 having voting yes, the motion passes. It is 739. We will take a five minute recess to allow the room to be vacated. And then after that, we will start our 15 minute clock. Extend the executive session for another 15, not to exceed 15 minutes um, under the same parameters. If we have a motion to do so by the body, we have a motion by Councilman Emerson. We have a second by the Deputy Mayor. All of those in favor of extending the executive session, please raise your right hand. Passes unanimously. We are going to recess again into executive session. are having to re-engage into the session. No action has been taken. We are going to re-engage in the session with the same parameters, not to exceed 20 minutes. 
Uh, do I have a motion to do so? We have a motion by Council Member Ortiz, a second by Council Member Padilla. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion passes. We recess again into executive session. We have completed executive session. No action has been taken. At this point in time, we are going to engage in a second executive session. If the attorney could please read the parameters. The motion is to recess into executive session for a period of time not to exceed 15 minutes for consultation with the city's legal counsel to discuss attorney-client privilege matters related to tort claims as justified by KSA 75-4319B2. In order to aid the discussion, the following individuals should be present. Members of the governing body, City Manager Brent Trout, Administrative and Financial Services Director Nikki Lee, Chief of Litigation Shelley Starr, and myself. No action is anticipated to be taken when the open meeting resumes in the governing body chambers. We have heard the parameters. What is the pleasure of the body? Deputy Mayor? Motion to approve. We have a motion for approval by the Deputy Mayor. Second by Councilwoman Ortiz. All of those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion passes. We now recess into executive session, not to exceed 15 minutes. Oh. We are out of executive session. However, we need, have a need to continue our discussion. Um, we are proposing not to exceed 15 minutes of discussion uh, in this matter. Do we have a motion for re-entering into the session? Deputy Mayor, we have a motion. Councilman Cohen, we have a second. All of those in favor to recess back into executive session on the same subject with the same parameters, please raise your right hand. <laughs> Thank you very much. We are now going to recess, uh, recess not to exceed 15 minutes. We have concluded the executive sessions with no action taken. That being said, the meeting is adjourned. Oh.